talk about safe havens. If this country continues to go in the direction that it's going in, it may not be safe to live here anymore. What is worth more? Your financial and material possessions? Or your life. Or your freedom or your life. So that's the other trend. So we listed what we believe to be the number of good solid safe haven opportunity wow so you're fine you're actually now saying the u.s people may need to evacuate even though other places are bad uh and, and you're saying we'll, we'll have to have you back in the new year to, to you know, list some of the places you're saying are safe but they're in your big report but but or safer what are a few of them well one of them is norway uh, th that's a that's a pretty solid one they still have their own currency and they very rich and they have they, the, the people are quite free in a lot of ways. That's pretty high on the list. The other one, you know, is that, you know, people ask us about South America. It could go either way. But for the time being, an easy place to get into. And again, one of the recommendations that we make is people right away, they're ready to buy something. Don't buy anything. Go look. Go there. Go there check the place out. Uh, um, Uruguay. Uruguay is pretty solid right now. It's pretty easy to get into, and it has a lot of wealth flowing into it from Brazil and from Argentina. So those are just two of the, of the several that we list. The next one, of course, is, and you're well familiar with this, <clears throat> Big Brother Internet. This could be a year when it determines whether or not we will truly ever have any kind of Internet freedom. Because just like they passed the National Defense Authorization Act, you know the new acts that are coming into place that may close down Internet freedom. And again, these trends can be reversed. Just as I mentioned the repatriate, repatriate trend. We don't have to become a nation and, and continue to sink lower yeah. in, into people that are clerks and cashiers. So we have the will to change. Stop these participating things. in the big mega box stores. Stop participating in New World Order establishment systems. Wake up, warn others. We can turn it around. Yes, absolutely. I mean, who's to say that these that these people, as you call them and I call them, these psychopaths and sociopaths, should be telling us what to do? And that's part of the next one, by the way, going out in style. You go back to the 1930s. Carol, let me stop you right there. Here's the problem. I've got a guest coming up. I know you've got to go, but last time we didn't get to all of these. We've got to go to break. Can you do four or five minutes on the other side just to finish the trends? Sure can. Okay, uh, guys, let um, Lindsey Williams apologize. Tell him we're just going to call him in five, six minutes. We're going to come back with Gerald, have him kind of run back into these others real fast that we haven't gotten to. And, of course, it's all broken down in detail at trendsresearch.com. And, we have a lot of similar analysis, uh, but his is more in-depth on each particular, uh, particular topic at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. So we'll be right back after this quick break. But this is reality. I mean, we've got really sick criminals running things. We've got to learn to say no, no. You've heard mine. Well, we're finding out who's who in the so-called conservative and libertarian movement. People are coming out of the woodwork. Uh, attacking Ron Paul right now, and I, I've got a Mitt Romney article. In fact, you guys get it off the printer for me. I forgot to get it in here. Now, the Washington Post, where they say, it's Mitt Romney's job now, there it is, to derail Ron Paul. Romney casts Ron Paul as a fringe candidate. Says he's working hard to derail the Texas congressman. Well, I thought nobody liked him. I thought he couldn't win. I thought he was a fringe candidate. But you've got to work hard to derail him? Because you're discredited. You're for abortion, open borders, carbon taxes, and rote Obamacare. This is all on record. And you're just like Newt Gingrich. Look, he's in fifth place now. Ron Paul is numero uno. He's rising in all the states. He's either in first, second, or third place. So that mind control mantra that he couldn't win is now failing. I wanted to get Gerald Salente's take on that briefly and then hit the four or five other trends he didn't get to out of his 12 trends. Uh, again, Gerald Salente, top trends forecaster, is our guest. And for the rest of the hour, Lindsey Williams, who just always has amazing information, and, and, and uh, we'll do part two of an interview we started earlier in the week, and we'll open the phones up again for your questions for Lindsey Williams because they were really excellent questions, and I wanted to get to more of those. 
Uh, but briefly, uh, does isn't Ron Paul's rise another illustration of people really getting fed up and the fact that so-called MSM, the dinosaur prostitutes, aren't in control anymore and are getting more and more desperate? Absolutely. You pick up the toilet paper of record, the New York Times. I believe it was December 19th, front page story, Mitt Mittens Romney all over the place. On, on Christmas Day, front page, Mittens Romney all over the place. On Wednesday, front page, Mittens Romney all over the place. Open it up yesterday, Mittens all over the place. Only time they talk about Ron Paul is in a negative light. Listen to what fat boy Gingrich said about people like myself that support Ron, Ron Paul. No decent American would support his policy. Call me, tell me I'm not a decent American, neuter. We could have it out man to man. And look at that little weenie up there over in New Hampshire, the guy who runs that rag, that newspaper, the, the Herald of the New Hampshire. He called Ron Paul dangerous. Yeah, no, yeah, no, and anybody that supports them, we're lunatic fringe. Let that little weenie come and call me a lunatic fringe. Well, well hold on, Gerald. That's exactly, you're right. That's what Mitt Romney's saying. He's saying the front runner that the majority of people are supporting that we're bad too. No, yeah. you're bad, you hedge fund scammer. Exactly. Exactly. But what the media is doing, again, where does, where does Neuter Gingrich come out and say that any decent American wouldn't support Ron Paul? Who, who ordained this fat boy, the arbiter of who's decent? This guy that's screwing around as his wife's dying in the hospital, one after another. And he's saying we're indecent? And again, this little ragmeister up there in New Hampshire with that crappy little newspaper out there says only the lunatic fringe supports Ron Paul. Who are these people? And the toilet paper of record, the same thing. Read their editorials. You know what they call Ron Paul's ideas? Claptrap ideas. Oh, listen, final point on this. We'll finish your trends, girls. I know you got to go. Uh, I, I saw a new talking point. He, Ron Paul may still win Iowa because his people are cult members and won't listen to us and our reasoning with them. No, people know you're a pack of scumbags bought and paid for by the mega banks that gutted and destroyed this country. We know you're a bunch of Tory redcoat supporters, punks. And if Ron Paul doesn't win this time, it doesn't matter. Our power is rising. The people don't buy your lies anymore, scum. That's right, which brings us to the other trend. If Ron Paul doesn't make it, you better understand what you got out there, folks. The Gambinos and the Bananos, the Republicans and the Democrats, directdemocracynow.org. We have to take the power and put it back into the hands of the people. And all those trolls out there that say, oh, then we would have mob, war, war, mob rule. 51% would rule. What do you think you got now? You got a gang of 535. That's the mob in Congress that's ruling. Another trend. And again, they all tie together. Going out in style. People need to rebuild their self-respect. You look at the 30s, the worst depression up until now. Look at the style this nation had. Look what we were building. Look at the way people were dressing. Goes back to quality. You know what? It doesn't take anything much to dress up. It's not like, you know, doing exercise or going on a diet. You can look nice. You don't have to look like a cafone. You know what I mean? So what we're saying is step up to style because it builds self-respect. When you have self-respect, you don't take crap from Neuter Gingrich, Mittens Romney, or rag owner McCade up in New Hampshire because you have self-respect. Going out in style means buying quality, supporting local. The last trend, Alex, we're talking about the new energy opportunities on the horizon, the big ones now, the dangers of them, and what we can see coming ahead. All right. Well, people can find more at TrendsResearch.com. Gerald, thank you so much for spending time with us and have a great and safe New Year.
and happy new year to you and everyone else. All right, there goes Gerald Salente of Trends Research. Now joining us for the rest of the hour is a man who needs no introduction to our regular listeners. And we do have Bob Chapman, Gary Franchi, and Max Kaiser coming up later as well today uh, in this uh, final radio broadcast uh, that simulcast also at PrisonPlanet.tv of 2011. I'll be back with the TV show tonight, our actual last media event of 2011 before we make the plunge into 2012. Uh, Lindsey Williams, uh, of course, is an ordained Baptist minister. He went to Alaska in 71 as a missionary, ended up being uh, brought in as the liaison by the oil companies uh, to the oil field workers for at least three years. There he met a lot of people like uh, Atlantic Richfield, head of operations, and another actual CEO of one of the big three. Um, one of them's died now, so we can mention his name, Mr. Fromm, not this Christmas, but last Christmas about a year ago. Uh, but the other gentleman is known by me, but I'm obviously not going to give out that source. Uh, but uh, he's a big insider, gives Lindsay a kind of a bird's eye view on what the globalists are saying and doing. And uh, he joins us now to briefly in this segment in the next recap. But then I promise at 33 after we're going to your phone calls at 800-259-9231 because the callers asking questions are going to take us in directions that I wouldn't think to take us. So he's gracious to join us. And uh, you can know uh, he's also got a three DVD set on um, what's coming up in 2012 available at prophecyclub.com. We'll give you that number and more before he leaves us. Uh, Lindsay, great to have you back. Recap uh, where the world's going, uh, why it's so important. And then we're going to go to calls. I beg of everyone out there in your listening audience at GCN and on the Alex Jones show today in Four Wars. I beg of you. I plead with you to listen to the buzzwords that the elite have given me within the past two weeks' time. If you do, uh, you will be able to spare yourself major heartache in 2012. There is no question whatsoever that 2012 will be the most startling and unusual and eventful year in 2000 years. I said that three months ago when we first came out with 2012, the beginning of the end. Now, since I was given this information just days ago, about the currency devaluation, I want to give you the buzzwords right from Mr. Bernanke's speech. Then I'd like to go into the five points he said. I'll do all this if I can between now and the end of the, this a half hour. And then, please, folks, I want to tell you what to do about this. You see, there are elite who are old. The people I knew 35 years ago when I was invited to be the chaplain to the elite of the world and lived with these people, sat across the dinner table with them, lived in the same dorms with them for three years, have kept in touch with them over these years. They're in their 70s and 80s now, and old men are talking because they've got a conscience, regardless of who they are. When they face their maker, they know they're going to face it. All right, here we go. Just within a matter of days ago, the elitist basically said to me, Go to a certain place, chaplain, and you will know what is about to happen. First of all, I want to punctuate this by saying they did not give me a date. I didn't say whether it's going to happen in January or February. It is going to happen. Mark my words. It's already been said. I want to give you that buzzwords. Please take this down. I hope you have pencils and paper again today because I'm going to give you facts that you can go on the Internet and find them for yourself. They said, go to November the 21st, 2002. Look at the remarks of then Governor Ben Bernanke. He today is chairman of the Federal Reserve. Back then he was the governor of the Federal Reserve, one of many. And they said, look at the speech that he gave at the National Economics Club in Washington, D.C., on November the 21st, 2002, and you will know what is going to take place and they didn't say 2012, but I think I can surmise from reading between the lines that this is going to happen, and it's not going to be too long off, and you must make preparation. They're buzzwords. Here they are. First of all, there is going to be a currency devaluation. You can depend on it as much as you can depend on the sun coming up this morning and the moon being up tonight. It is going to happen. What does a currency devaluation mean? All right, first of all, let me give you this statement. You need to get this one first, then I'll give you their buzzwords. Whenever a nation finds itself in an insurmountable physical debt hole, 
there are essentially two ways to fix the problem. Number one, and on one hand, they can